Welcome back everyone to another Mac Deck Tech. Today we're going over Planeswalker Party, a pre-con from Commander Masters focused around, you guessed it, the Planeswalkers. Before we dive on into our 10 cards that we took out and the 10 cards that are replacing them, I notice that most of you aren't subscribed to the channel. If you're enjoying these deck techs and uh, upgrade guide, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow and ring that bell to get notified of when we upload new videos. This video in particular is going to be dedicated to Queest, uh, who was a recent subscriber to the channel that used our Food and Fellowship guide to crush a commander competition, securing first place. Queest, you rock. With that out of the way, let's get into cards that just didn't quite make the cut. Starting off with Cartographer's Hawk, a 2-1 flyer for 2 that can let us grab planes from our deck and put them right onto the battlefield tapped. We only have one non-basic planes in the deck. And as usual, we aren't touching the mana base for these upgrades. If we had a few more targets for this ability, I think it'd be a solid piece of ramp in the deck, but as things stand now, it's just not enough for the mana fixing targets that we have. Fog Bank is up next, and as a flying defender that prevents all combat damage dealt to it, it's kind of a hard cut to make, because he's ultimately defending all of our planeswalkers every turn, he's guaranteed to kind of stick around. But He's not really stopping our opponents, he's only slowing them, and he's not really a threat for us on the board. So, he's out of here. Gideon Jura is the only Planeswalker that we're taking out. I had hoped to leave the Planeswalkers widely untouched for this guy, but couldn't find enough cards to cut from the other types. Gideon Jura ultimately feels weaker than a lot of the other Planeswalkers in the deck. His plus two ability feels a little off for what we're doing. I know that there's some combo potential there. Um, and then his minus two is a decent removal kind of piece. His zero effect feels fine. I mean, a 6-6 six, six on board every turn that kind of turns back into just being a Planeswalker is good. But with the emphasis this deck has on copying the abilities of our Planeswalkers when we activate them, none of these ones really stand out except for maybe the destroyed tap target creature, and it's just not enough. Honorworn Shaku is a lovely little mana rock, taps are colorless, and you can tap an untapped legendary permanent you control, such as any of our planeswalkers, to untap it. However, we don't really have mana synced in this stack, so I just don't think we need a mana rock that's going to generate a bunch of colorless mana. If it generated, you know, colored mana, that'd be different, but it just doesn't, so we're just not going to keep it. Kazul, Tyrant of the Cliffs allows us to create some 3-3 Ogres for each creature attacking us unless the opponent pays 3 for each of them. And while this could give us the opportunity to have a rather large board state and always have chump blockers if nothing else, you know, if we were keeping Gideon Jura around for his plus 2 ability, I think that these two combo well in that regard. Um, but that not being the case, I just think the ability is a little lackluster. Lorne's Annex is up next. And again, it's just, it's, it's a card that lets us turtle, and we're not really trying to turtle, right? The longer the game goes on, the more likely that our opponents are going to have very heavy creature-based boards that we just won't have answers for. And they'll have the mana to pay to let those things get through. So, Lorne's Annex, for that reason, you're out of here. Oath of Gideon. One extra loyalty for all of our Planeswalkers on ETB is fine. The two 1-1s one aren't likely to do much aside from do some chump blocking. I just don't think it's strong enough to make the cut. Oath of Jace is in a similar boat. It's a source of card selection which can be strong, but just isn't doing enough to warrant sticking around. Orisco's Explorer is similar to Cartographer Hawk, which we already took out, only it's not as strong putting those cards into our hand instead of on the field. Last up is Wall of Denial. It's a big wall that doesn't do much aside from eating a hit, Again, we're not really looking to eat hits, we're looking to dish them out. That being said, let's get into what's taking the place of all these cards. Arena Reactor is looking to die to let us chain on a Planeswalker from our deck, slamming it right onto the field. As a 1-2, their death is easy enough to have happen by simply blocking with them. Lazelle, Valkyth's Champion, increases our encounters, replacing on our Planeswalkers, letting them reach their ultimates a little bit faster. Call the Gatewatch allows us to tutor up a Planeswalker of our choice, getting it into hand instead of on the field, but for 3 mana, I'm pretty okay with that. 
Chaotic Transformation lets us cheat out up to one artifact, enchantment, creature, and planeswalker by exiling a card that shares a tape with it. The effect being up to one of each means that we don't have to have all of them in the field for this spell to go off, making it pretty versatile and a good way to say, hey, these little things that like had their ETB and have kind of done their due diligence can just kind of go away now. Comeuppance is a powerful fog effect that deals damage back. This could act as a powerful board wipe or just a deflecting SWAT style no you effect. Ignite the Beacon is Call the Gate Watch Plus, allowing us to grab two Planeswalkers instead of just one and doing so at instant speed. It wouldn't be a Planeswalker deck without Icker Moon Gauntlet, allowing all of our Planeswalkers to proliferate and take extra turns. Lithoform Engine will let us copy our Planeswalker abilities, including those extra turns that we just mentioned. Obi-Wan is a powerhouse in this deck. When we play our Planeswalkers, we're going to have damage to throw around with it. And every time we get to use our plus abilities, we get to do the same. Rowan's Talent gives a Planeswalker a new plus one ability, but more importantly, copies the activation of their activated abilities. All right, but those are the 10 new cards being added to the deck, and now it's time for everyone's favorite three R's. That's right, it's Ramp, Reaction, and Removal. Commodore Guff creates some tappable wizards, which are guaranteed us one red mana. Chandra, Legacy of Fire, will add a red mana to our pool for each Planeswalker we control. While Chandra, Torch of Defiance, will add a simple two. Narset of the Ancient Way will add a blue, red, or white mana. Aside from those, we're pretty heavily reliant on mana rocks, but luckily we have quite a few. Arcane Signet, along with Azorius, Boros, and Izzy Signet. Belwar Stone, Gatewatch Beacon, Soul Ring, of course, and then Talismans of Conviction, Creativity and progress. We also have a Wayfarer's Bobble in order to go ahead and search up a land for us. Reactions are a little sparse in this stack, with Guff Rewrites History, Path to Exile, Semester's End, Swords to Plowshares, and Comeuppance. As far as removal goes, we're starting off with Chandra, a Wicked Inferno, who could deal 3 damage to all non-elementals, or X damage to a single target. Torture Defiance is back, with 2 damage effects herself, one a flat 4, and the other an emblem that deals 5 damage every time we cast a spell, making it a prime target for copying. Elspeth, Sun's Champion, can wipe out all creatures with at least 4 power. Nahiri the Harbinger can exile enchantments as well as tapped artifacts and creatures. Narset of the Ancient Way deals damage by discarding cards and dealing damage equal to the CMC of the card that we just got rid of. The Wanderer exiles a single target, but can be done twice before they have to sort of just sit in the field preventing non-combat damage from happening to us and permanents we control. Vranos, Masked Inquisitor, bounces a card per opponent. Blasphemous Act, as we all know and love, is here and it's going to do damage based removal to hit creatures. This is going to work wonders in the deck because our Planeswalker is going to be left unscathed, we're going to have a clear field, and we're going to have time to build up those loyalty counters. Speaking of wiping the field, we have Promise of Loyalty. It's a nice way to force mass sacrifice and protect ourselves for whatever is left. We're in Board Wipe City with Urza's Ruinous Blast. It's going to exile all non-land permanents that aren't legendary. Again, leaving all of our Planeswalkers intact to kind of continue doing their thing. I'm mentioning comeuppance once again. It's just back, you know, it's going to remove some foolish threats who decided they wanted to attack us. Uh, if there's enough damage from a single spell, it could remove entire players. It's a good time. We have Guff Rewrites History back again. It's a single target, so it's not nearly as powerful as comeuppance in my mind, but still pretty good. We, of course, have Path to Exile and Swords to Plowshares. As always, they are Commander Staples. Nevenral's Disc is a little on the slow side, a little telegraph, but again leaves our Planeswalkers alone and wipes the rest of the field. 
And lastly, we have All Will Be One. Which actually combos off really well with Semester's End to deal a bunch of damage all at once. But again, this is a deck that cares about these loyalty counters. We're going to constantly be adding more on. We get to trigger it whenever we play our commanders. Or not our commanders, but our planeswalkers, rather. Uh, but yeah, guys, that's it. That's the deck tech. I hope you enjoyed it. If you, you know, you want to see more of these, please subscribe. If you want to see deck techs that aren't just pre-con upgrades, I do have some I can make. You know, are there cards that I took out that you're like, whoa, 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 that should have been in there? Were there cards that I added that you're like, what is this even doing in this deck? Are you a madman? <laughs> Let me know in those comments down below. And until next time, guys, good luck with your builds.